But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? Tis the east, and Juliet is the sun. Oh, Harris, you ought to be pitching for the Yankees. You've got so much on the ball. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Enjoyment here is the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, transcribed, written by Ed James and Lou Derman, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharpley's music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Tonight we bring you a bright little gem entitled The Traffic Problem in Los Angeles or Dante's Inferno. <laughs> First, however, here's a word from RCA Victor. You can travel from coast to coast. You can visit concert halls, sports arenas, theaters. And you can do it all, see it all, right in your own living room, thanks to television. 80 million Americans now enjoy the entertainment and educational benefits of television. 80 million Americans, every other person, can tune in symphonies, movies, plays, and sports events. If your family's missing the wonders of TV, buy a new RCA Victor now. RCA Victor Television brings you true-to-life pictures that are big as life. And with new rotomatic tuning, every station is tuned on target. One click of one knob brings in the station with virtually no fine adjustments. And thanks to the magic monitor circuit system, you can depend on television's clearest, steadiest pictures. See your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow. He has a set perfect for your home. And he can probably deliver your dependable RCA Victor immediately. Remember, owners of RCA Victor television in principal TV areas can enjoy expert installation and maintenance through an RCA Victor factory service contract. Another reason why every year more people buy dependable RCA Victor than any other television. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Bill Harris. <laughs> When the average husband refers to his better half, he means his wife, but not Phil Harris. To fill his better half is his left profile. <laughs> or is it his right? Well, anyway, here he comes with both profiles shining and a full set of teeth to match. <laughs> Two loves have I, it's a perfect parlay. My wife's a doll, but I love RCA. <laughs> oh, hiya, honey. What are you looking at? Oh, Phil, the prints of our new pictures just arrived. Oh, they did, huh? Well, let's mail them out. And let's not keep all that beauty to ourselves. <laughs> they look pretty good, don't they? Let me see them. Gosh, you look wonderful, Alice. Just wonderful. Oh, thank you, kind sir, she said. I don't know about me. Somehow, pictures don't do me justice. Why, Phil? No, honey, I mean it. Now, look at this one. Look. He's got that boyish twinkle in my eyes, but... Well, he didn't capture my lovable, devil-may-care smile. You mean your wolfish leer? <laughs> no, I mean the magnetic charm that makes me irresistible to all females between 16 and 60. Is that their age or their IQ? <laughs> take it easy, will you, Brenda? You married me, didn't you? Don't that show that I attract the brainy type? Duh. <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs> hey, huh? hey, do that again, Alice, will you? <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of a dame I used to go with in Nashville. Oh, you're kidding. No, no, honey. No, I'm not. You should have seen her. Red hair, blue eyes, and skin like a 10-year-old. How old was she? 10 years old. 
Of course, I was only 11 at the time. In them days, I was known as Marshmallow Harris, host of the Campfire Girls. <laughs> them was the days. <laughs> Say, Phil. Yeah. Speaking of girls, what do you suppose happened to ours? They should have been home from school an hour ago. Maybe they got too smart and the teacher's keeping them in to give them some more stupid pills. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Phyllis told me she said she would have had straight A's last month if it wasn't for them stupid pills. Oh, I don't know. Those girls tell you anything and you believe it. Honey, honey, wait a minute. Phyllis got a D in English, didn't she? And you know no daughter of mine ain't getting no D in English if they ain't giving her no soap. Phil. Phil, what's a coquette? A what? A coquette. It's a small coke. What? <laughs> Just testing. Alice, I happen to know this English language like a native. So go ahead. Test me again. Ask me anything. All right. Uh, what's a silhouette? It's a small salute. <laughs> Thought I didn't know, huh? And a baguette? A baguette? Well, that'd be... That'd be, uh... Oh, oh, a baguette's a small girl. <laughs> You know, honey, they didn't hand out none of them stupid pills when I went to school. Well, they handed out something. Hi, everybody. We're home. Well, it's about time. Where have you been? Girls, you know how I worry about you when you don't come straight home from school. But we did, Mom. You just can't get across Ventura Boulevard, that's all. Well, why don't you cross with the light? There isn't any light at White Oak. And every time you try to cross, the cars begin chasing you. But we fool them. We keep running back and forth. Had a girl. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Don't give them a chance to aim. Just give them... <laughs> Don't they have a crosswalk at White Oak? Well, it's all rubbed out. How about the safety zone? Honey, them things are pickup stations for the Blue Cross. <laughs> <laughs> about the only way to get on the other side of Ventura Boulevard is to be born there. <laughs> Well, what happened to that petition that Willie got up for a light at White Oak? Didn't everybody sign it? Well, the city said the funds were all gone. Oh, fine, fine, funds. A big city like this, and they can't shell out for one puny light. I know somebody can fix it. Sniffy. Sniffy? <laughs> she thinks he's so wonderful. He's a district attorney, isn't he? Some district attorney. All right, wait a minute. Sniffy is the district attorney? How could a 15-year-old kid be well, a... Well, look, honey, it's boys' week, and Sniffy's father appointed him honorary district attorney. Oh, well. My boyfriend is the assistant fire chief. Some boyfriend. And he can get a light faster than any old district attorney, I bet you. He can not. He All can, right, too. Kids. What good's an old district attorney? Phyllis. He isn't old, and he's look, better Alice. than any old fire chief. He isn't. Alice. He certainly is. Will you, he you is cut it, it. kids? He is, too. He Alice, is. Will you it, cut is. It? it is. It is. Will you stop it that? Is. Stop it. Pardon me, is this the contented hour? <laughs> oh, hello, Elliot. Come on in. Hi, Uncle Elliot. Hi. What's up? I could hear you clear down the driveway. Uncle Elliot, isn't a district attorney better than a fire chief? Assistant fire chief. All right, girls, all That's right. That's even worse. It isn't either. Okay, that does it. Upstairs, the both of you. But, Dad... You heard your father. Upstairs. But, Mom... Not another word. Gee whiz. You and your district attorney think he's so wonderful. He's better than your old fire chief. He isn't either. He is, too. He is, too. He is, too. He is, too. He is, 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 is,
we do have a problem. There's no traffic light at White Oak, and Alice and Phyllis have a terrible time getting across the street. Why don't they use the crosswalk? Because there isn't any crosswalk. Okay, let's paint one. Now, look, Kelly, and listen to me. Don't... Phil, wait a minute. You don't have to say a word to me, honey. I promised you, and I'm not getting mixed up in any more of his crazy ideas. You but don't it's have... a good idea. A three-year-old child can paint a white line. You see, Curly, it's right down our alley. <laughs> All we need is some paint and a couple of brushes. I got a feeling that something's going to happen. But... Let's go paint some lines. Boy, look at them cars. There must be a million of them. Look at them later, will you? We got to get these lines painted. Now, you start on this side, and I'll go across the street, and we'll both work toward the metal. Got it? Got it. And Curly? Look out! That guy almost killed me. Did you see him snarl when he missed? Yeah. <laughs> Look, Elliot. Huh? I'll start over here and you go across the street. Okay. And Curly? Look out! Curly, why don't we just paint lines on this side? <laughs> Elliot, we're supposed to paint a crosswalk all the way across If we only put lines on one side of the street, it's no good We'll have all this paint left over <laughs> Well, we could paint a couple of lines down the middle A straight one for men drivers and a zigzag one for lady drivers <laughs> We're gonna paint a crosswalk Okay, let's start painting All right, now, move over there about ten feet And then we'll paint across together Right, you just give me the notice all right. On your mark, get set, go! Elliot, Elliot. Yes, Curly? Let's talk this thing over. Okay. <laughs> if we can't get out into the road, we can't paint the lines, can we? That seems like a reasonable supposition. And every time we step off the curb, we get chased by a car. Right? Dead. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. Now, there's only one sensible way to do this. One of us has to paint, and one of us has to act as a decoy. <laughs> a decoy? Yeah. What's a decoy? A decoy? Well, well, it's like, look, one of us stands in the middle of the road, and the cars all aim at him. <laughs> So they don't notice the other guy Who is quietly painting You mean the guy that's out there ducking cars That's a decoy Yeah One of us You wouldn't have any ideas about which one of us <laughs> Good luck, Elliot <laughs> Long curly. Just remember, I'm doing this for your wife and kids. Your wife and kids. Ah, you missed me. Ah, you missed me. Missed again. <laughs> Get my painting done, Curly. Well, if it ain't crazy legs, hurts. <laughs> yeah, Getting that old fake root in there. Yeah, that. man, you were spinning in and out. <laughs> How's the paint coming along? Are you kidding? I didn't even get the brush wet. <laughs> oh, fine. I'm getting chased all over the boulevard, and you go to sleep on the job. Are you kidding? You weren't gone two seconds. In two seconds, how could I get ten years older? Oh, <laughs> now, look. Let's try it again, and try to stay out there a little longer. Oh, wait a minute. Huh? Wait, 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 Curly. Just hold it. Now, what's the matter? I got a better idea. We dig a tunnel. Elliot. It's <laughs> a very practical idea. I don't know look, about... Curly... Do they have crosswalks over the Hudson River? No. Do but... they have tunnels under the Hudson River? Well, sure. Then but... why ain't it a good idea? I ain't said it wasn't. I ain't said it wasn't. I just don't think that Alice is gonna like it, that's all. She liked the crosswalk, didn't she? And this is better, believe me. Well, I don't know, but Elliot, where are you going? You stay right there, Curly. I gotta borrow a pick and shovel. <laughs> Uh, 
How you doing, Elliot? Hey, Curly. Yeah. There's another flock of wires down here. <laughs> what kind? Same as last time. Bell telephone. <laughs> Pull them out. <laughs> All of them? Sure. What do we want with telephone wires? Now, if they was electric wires leading to an RCA Victor television set with a 27-inch screen, that'd be different. You mean RCA Victor television sets work good in tunnels? Good. They even work in a cave. Peter the Hermit's got one in every room. <laughs> but these are telephone wires, so I chop them out, right? Right. Okay. Chop, chop. Hello, boy, Elliot. You're doing fine. Well, and how are you this fine evening? Oh, oh, oh. Hello, officer. Beautiful night, isn't it? You and your friend lost something? Oh, no, no. We're just taking a hole. Hey, Curly. Here's the wire. Okay, toss it out. Yep. Atta boy. Hey, Curly, I gotta rest for a minute. I. Oh, hello, officer. Would you mind telling me exactly what you're doing? Well, when we started, we were painting the crosswalk. Eight feet under the ground? No, no, no. No, you see, my friend here explained to me that they didn't have any crosswalks over the Hudson River, but they had lots of tunnels. So we decided to dig one. Oh, this is going to be a tunnel under the Hudson River, is that it? <laughs> He's got a great sense of humor, Andy. <laughs> no, no, officer, look. <laughs> this is getting sharp as a biscuit. No, look, uh, you, uh, you don't understand, officer. You see, I've got two little girls and they have to cross the road, but there's no light here. So we're digging a tunnel instead. You're digging a tunnel under Ventura Boulevard? We could build a bridge, but a tunnel's so much more practical. Especially when it rains. Yeah. Well, you keep digging your tunnel, boys. I've got to make me call into the station. Yeah, all right. So long, officer. It was nice talking to you. Yeah, you come back any time. Hey, he was a nice guy, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he got a lot. Hello, Tim. This is Mike. Send the wagon. I've got a couple of doozies. <laughs> I'll only stay a few minutes. All right, Mrs. Harris, you'll find your husband in cell two. Uh, that's uh, the bridal suite. Thank you. The bridal suite? Yes, ma'am. That has twin straitjackets. <laughs> oh, Phil. You were supposed to paint two little lines. Honey, honey, it's all a mistake. I'll be out the first thing in the morning. If they hadn't have taken away the pick and shovel, we could have been out of here tonight. <laughs> honey, I brought your pajamas and your toothbrush. Oh, thanks, honey, but it's not that bad. This ain't a bad jail. It's nice and warm. Well, I'd better go, Phil. Can't you stay a few more minutes? But the girl. No sense going out in the cold when you could stay here in a nice, comfortable jail. Well, Phil, I ought to go home. Honey, please. I simply can't but stay. But, baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go but away. But, baby, it's cold outside. This evening has then been hoping that you drop so in. very warm. I'll hold your hands there just My like My mother I. will start to worry. Beautiful, what's your hurry? And father will be pacing the floor. Listen to the fireplace. So broke. really, I'd better scurry. Beautiful, please don't Well, burn. maybe just a half a drink Put more. Put some records on while I The hold. neighbors may but think. Baby, it's bad out there. Say, what's in this No drink? cabs to be had out there. I wish I knew your how Your eyes are like starlight to break now. The spell. I'll take your hat, your hair. Looks I smart. ought to say no, no, no. Mind sir. if I move in At closer. least I'm gonna say that I try. What's the sense of hurting my pride? I really can't stay. Baby, don't hold out. Oh, Baby, but it's, it's cold outside. I simply must but go. Baby, it's cold. Cold outside. The answer is no. Baby, it's cold outside. The welcome has How been. How lucky that you dropped so in. So nice and warm. Look out the window at My that sister song. will be suspicious. Gosh, your lips look delicious. My brother will be there at the door. Waves upon the tropical shore. My maiden aunt's mind is vicious. Gosh, your lips are delicious. Well, maybe just a cigarette bowl. Never such a blizzard before. I've got to get home. But baby, you 
trees out there. Say, lend me a coat. It's cold. up to your knees out there. You've really been grinding. I thrill when you touch my but hand. don't you see? How can you do this thing There's to me? There's bound to be talk tomorrow. Think of my lifelong sorrow. At least there will be plenty implied. If you caught pneumonia and I die. really can't Get say. over that old owl, oh, baby. It's, it's cold. cold outside. outside. The court will rise. <laughs> hey, Curly. I'm getting worried. Oh, worried about what? We didn't do nothing. What's wrong with digging a tunnel? Quiet over there. Yes, Your Mat uh, Your Honor. Yes, sir. This will court of the Law Santa Judicial District, Division 32. The Honorable Robert Anderson presiding is now in session. Be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, this is Boys Week, and uh, so assisting me on the bench will be a representative elected to this office by the student body of the Encino High School. My colleague and associate, the Honorable Julius Abruzzio. <laughs> Proceed, Judge Abruzio. It's a pleasure, Your Honor. Bailiff? Yes, Your Honor? What's the first ducket on the docket? <laughs> People versus Phil Harris and Elliot Lewis. Charge destroying public property. I find them guilty and sentence them to life imprisonment. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Julius, it's us. Your friends. Step down. Judge Abruzio, uh, may I confer with you for one moment? Okay, Your Honor. Everybody hold it a second. My honor's going to confer with his honor. <laughs> yes, your honor? Uh, <clears throat> Judge Abruzio, before we sentence the defendants, don't you think it might be a good idea to hold the trial? But, Judge, I know these guys. We'd be letting them off right if we executed the bottom. <laughs> I object on the grounds that he's irrelevant, immaterial, and inconstitutional. <laughs> According to the 21st Amendment. The 21st Amendment. That repeals prohibition. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that a beauty? <laughs> Why, in all, have you put in solitary? You want to, can I clip these jokes for contempt of court? Why, by all means. Oh, Julius, you wouldn't do a thing like that, would you? <laughs> Now look, you little fink. Twenty bucks for contempt of court. What? And twenty bucks for asking questions. Forty dollars, please. Pay the man, Curly. You and your tunnels. Here. <laughs> Judge Abruzio, shall we proceed? Do we have to? Julius. The courts of this country are designed to protect the innocent as well as to punish the wrongdoer. In our democracy, every man is deemed innocent until proven guilty. Well, let's prove him guilty and get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the face witness? The arresting officer, Your Honor. Hiya, Mike! Hello, Junior. Oh, we're in great shape. <laughs> please. Thank you. Oh, don't mention it. Don't mention it. Proceed, Your Honor. Mike, what were these criminals doing when you found them? Digging a hole. I object. It was a tunnel. <laughs> now you did it. It opens by itself. What is that? Where I get you outside, you little creep? Elliot, will you stop it? Stop it. We must have moved to a higher court. Seventy dollars, please. What are we doing? Buying the courthouse? Now what did I say? A hundred bucks for trying to bribe an officer. 
Proceed, Judge Abruzio. Mike, would you say that these murderers was under the influence? <laughs> we didn't say nothing. <laughs> Judge Abruzio, are you implying that these men have been known to indulge? Indulge? They indulge till they bulge. <laughs> Mr. Harris. Yes, sir? I recognize the spirit which prompted your action. Recognize it? You can bottle it. <laughs> but we cannot have the people taking matters into their own hands. After all, what would we have if everyone decided to dig his own tunnel? Live pedestrians. <laughs> He's broke it. <laughs> I'm afraid the court can do nothing but find you both guilty as charged. But, Your Honor... Judge I... Abruzio will pass sentence. Have the trap get ready. <laughs> uh, Judge Abruzio, the penalty in a case of this type is generally a fine. You mean I can't have him executed? I'm afraid not. Gee whiz. According to my calculations, we need another two hundred and ten dollars. Two hundred and ten dollars for what? I find them two hundred and ten dollars. Now wait a minute. That's five hundred bucks for digging one little hole. Uh, not exactly. It's five hundred bucks to install one traffic light at Ventura and White Oaks. Taste this mix. Oh. <laughs> Bill, we'll be back in just a moment. You have a center aisle seat at the world's greatest concerts with a new RCA Victor high fidelity phonograph. This is the most important development in music since the invention of recorded sound. Until now, much of the music may never have come through your phonograph. But RCA Victor high fidelity lets you hear virtually all the sound in the record. Now you can enjoy music with all the wrappings off. You can get all the overtones. Hear each note as though you were right there in the concert hall. The secret is a new concept in acoustic design, a concept built into a table model phonograph little more than a foot in height, width, and depth. But hearing is believing, so treat your ears to a demonstration of true high fidelity at your RCA Victor dealer. Hear the new high fidelity phonograph by RCA Victor, first in recorded music. <laughs> This is Phil again. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, we've tried to have a little fun with the traffic problem, and we hope we gave you a few laughs. But we'd also like to remind you that the holiday season is coming up, and that means a lot of added traffic on foot and in cars. So let's all try to take it a little easy, especially around the schools. Let's all be careful and have a real happy holiday this year. Good night, everyone. Say good night to the people, honey. Good night, everybody. That's my girl. Included in this program transcribed were Douglas Dumbrill, Dick Elliott, and Dick Ryan. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Radio Network presentation. That's Buddy Morrow and his trombone in a selection from The Big Beat his great new RCA Victor album with four rhythmic hits, including Memphis Drag and Beale Street Mama. On 45 extended play, this new Buddy Morrow album costs about $1.40. Listen to The Big Beat at your RCA Victor record dealers now. <laughs> Tune in the All-Star Review this Saturday on NBC TV. The show will star Phil Harris with his guests, Ann Sheridan, Michael O'Shea, Mary McCarty, Edward Everett Horton, Les Brown's Van, and Red Nichols and his five pennies. Also, a surprise guest. This Saturday night, the All-Star Review. The Harris Fay Show is transcribed. Hear the voice of Firestone's gala anniversary show Monday on the NBC radio.